Hi, I'm Mr. T with RF Elements, and today we're visiting Linkway, an Italian wisp. Let's go! We have just arrived at Grosseto, in the scenic part of Italy called Tuscany. And behind me is Linkwave. Morning, Thomas. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, I'm Lorenzo Busatti. So we are into Linkwave headquarters in Grosseto. That we are in the south of Tuscany, the rural and wide part of Tuscany, and one of the widest in, in Italy. I started my company in 1997 uh, by, as ISP, providing internet services uh, with dial up modems with a strange sound. We started to develop a wireless, uh, a wireless project uh, in 2006, and in 2007, we start to to sell uh, internet connection in wireless uh, with the, the Linkwave brand. Uh, so next year will be 15 years of wireless on the wireless market. I have some backgrounds of electronics because I was an electronic developer and also in radio frequency. I was radio amateur and uh, when I was 14, uh, I created uh, um, a radio link at uh, one gigahertz for transmitting uh, uh, music between building between me and my friends. All our area is rural, 100%. So we start to build the first network from uh, Grosseto to Montorsaio to Campagnatico to Arcille, three very small villages in the rural area. And we started providing internet services with discrete success. At the beginning. So we start to move slowly our company from uh, ISP to a WISP. With Linkwave, we start to sell services in 2007. Next year will be 15 years of providing wireless, wireless services. We are covering the wall, almost the wall, the, the 90% of uh, Grosseto province. There are uh, thousands of square kilometers areas. It's very huge. And our area is uh, very rural, low density populated. Even if you're not able to see them, a lot of customers in a long range. So why we are operating at uh, a long range wireless uh, system, our maximum radius actually is uh, 15 kilometers from our base station. We have uh, almost uh, 3,500 customers in our network uh, and it is a good dimension for us because we are able to maintain high standard of quality. We have a redundant system for power, for radio, double access point, uh, double backhaul, double everything. And we, uh, we have in total five hours, five hours of downtime for a year, so it's, uh, the uptime is uh, similar to 100%. It's a very high standard. Mm -hmm. This is the service we are used to provide to our customers. We are offering residential services, but also business services mm -hmm. for uh, small businesses and or large businesses. For them, uh, we are providing dedicated services with guarantee bandwidth, usually is at least the 50% of the maximum speed that you can obtain. For example, 100 megabits, uh, 200 megabits, a half a gig, a full gig. We are providing, we are able to provide to our companies or uh, uh, um, tourist uh, structures that, are, are, that should need a lot of bandwidth to serve all the guests. Approximately, there are 40% business uh, and 60% residential. When you were starting, did you, did you start it by yourself? Or did you have all that skill set that, that was necessary? Or did you have partners? Or how did it go? I had the partner, of course. I don't have any more. I start with 
some skill that I have on my basic, okay, and the rest uh, using uh, self uh, support. Yeah, and I provide myself the information needed to provide in services, and they work. But I was not uh, full trained, that, and that's why I discovered when starting the WISP that I have to learn more if I want to do that in a professional way. So what, uh, what was the knowledge you you'd consider essential when starting a risk? Like what's the oh. bare minimum you need to know and be able to yeah. know? Networking stuff. So you should know how uh, TCP protocols and uh, IP addresses, basic of routing, uh, you should know that. And the wireless principle. So you should know in theory how work wireless wave. So if you know how work radio frequency and the technical stuff, you will know how to properly mount an antenna. One of the things that I, I like to show in, into my wireless training is a pole. Usually people find a pole and they mount an antenna with a bracket. That's it. They will not check if this pole is totally vertical. It is very important. It is seem to be just aesthetic stuff. Oh, maybe it's two degree on the side. No one know. Yes, you have two problems. If the pole is straight, when you are pointing the azimuth of the antenna, the antenna will move on the horizontal plane. If the pole have a degree, we move into a diagonal plan. It is not right. You will never properly point an antenna this way. And the second is the attenuation. Because you should know as a technician that the two antennas should be totally aligned on the same axis. Otherwise, you will have an attenuation. Who were your first customers and how, how did you acquire them? Like how, how did they come by? We still have our first customer okay. because I personally set up the first uh, customers and I still remember their name and the order of the day. So how did you, how did they learn about you providing internet? Like how did oh, they become wait. your customers? Yes. Uh, after the first parts of uh, experiment, experimental services, we start to advertise to the, all the municipalities of the area that like advertise in the in the press in TV. N- yes, or? in the press and uh, sending uh, right road communication and advertising. Hey, uh, we are able to provide uh, wireless services to the rural area. That is a problem. They are use it to write to the newspaper. We don't have internet here and blah blah. How did you go about expanding the customer base? The first uh, way to have customers for us was the customers telling other people how happy they was with our service. Self-advertisement network. Mm-hmm. It worked without providing discount. For free, the customers bring customers. I think the 80% of our customers came uh, by other customers. If you could also talk a little bit about like some challenges you had. I, I love the challenge and I, we had a lot. One of the best is uh, to build towers mm-hmm. because uh, everything is start uh, uh, 2015 when uh, one of the main providers uh, of tower space uh, start to request us the double of the fee to maintain the antennas on their towers. Just thinking one week, I think, no more, we start to build uh, our own towers. Uh, this site uh, was built at the end using a uh, helicopter and was able to bring here more than uh, 50 cube meters of concrete and all the iron needed, uh, all the pieces for this tower. The shelter also <laughs> was a work that was uh, almost impossible to do hearing the others' voices, you know? Right, but everyone was saying, no, go. No. <laughs> <laughs> right.
was expensive with the helicopters, but was uh, was of nice. Course. I was proud of them because uh, the money are not everything. The, to win a challenge or to realize something that people say is not possible, we satisfy you. Uh, we provide uh, uh, a way to be alive, you know. Of course. I was able to do that. As a WISP, we learn how to properly queue the internet. Because if your customer using to do the speed test, even if uh, he is torrenting <laughs> and start to complain, that's a problem because he complain and he, he don't believe you. Mm. You are not telling the truth to him. No, I have only one megabit. No, you are using 40 megabit, so just one megabit free. <laughs> no, no, no. You are not able to tell him uh, the truth. So you are telling him the truth, but he will not trust you. Mm -hmm. So what we done? What we done? I really <clears throat> hate that, but because we have to satisfy customers, of course, we create a queue for the services. We have eight level of queue. That's a lot of levels. <laughs> eight levels of queue. Okay. The first level of queue is for the VO IP services. If you should make a call, the call should pass for first on the traffic flow. But the second one is the speed test. And the third one are video stream services. And then we have websites. And then the other. At the end, we have torrent or other services and we have cloud services because if you shoot picture with your iPhone by road when you arrive at home the, your iPhone will connect to the Wi-Fi and start to publish on the cloud all the picture you shoot hogging yep. the whole upload that's why should not stop the other services to run but if you run the speed test at home your speed test will measure the whole bandwidth and we stop your Netflix. It's your choice, you know? Right, but right, right. You should be happy to read the full speed test. It's, a, it's a pleasure. You're welcome. Of course, of course. So you basically programmed your network, yeah. your routers and devices yeah. to the, prioritize these services the CP, in that order. The CPE of our customer are set up with that queue system. Okay. Okay. We are doing that with MacroTik we can. Because it has that freedom. Yeah. Right, right, right. On the CP side, we are doing that job, mm -hmm. not in the network. The network is open, it's uh, right. full, full transparent. Right. We are right. not uh, managing traffic. Because nothing. that's the best way to do it anyway. Yeah. Right? At your home, what are you doing? Speed test is the first to go. Right. Watching a video, okay. We stop the upload of, of, of an FTP, I don't know, whatever. But you should watch Netflix. We are happy with that. Right. Otherwise, my Netflix is not working. You are torrenting. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> That's the matter. So to provide, uh, to have happy customers, we... It's basically necessary. We had to do that. Yeah. Right. Or they will complain for nothing. Of course. Yeah, I mean, it's actually saving you an effort yeah. to constantly explain yourself yeah, and then uh, basically provides them their services they're using the most with the quality that they're yeah. paying for, right? Yeah, that's that's perfect, actually, right? So, yeah. everybody well, happy in the yeah, end. Yeah, everybody happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what kind of uh, dedicated frequencies or license frequencies do you use? Oh, we're using uh, two frequencies at, at the time, uh, 13 gigahertz and 18 gigahertz. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But we prefer 18 because uh, the, the vendor that we are using from Latvia have more TX power right. <laughs> compared to the, the other one. And because at uh, 18 gigahertz, uh, we have up to 110 megahertz channel. Oh, I see. So we can bring uh, two, gig two, two, two gigabit 
mm-hmm. with the one point to point links license which goes up I, to like five six kilometers or how far oh we can go much further 20 27 30 yeah. <laughs> 18 <laughs> okay so big dishes i mean yes yes of course electric big dishes side, yes. of course yeah. and good weather of course right we will have attenuation with rain but in, in a very long range we have uh, one back hole is 37 kilometers at 18 gigahertz. Uh, usually it run at uh, two gigabit right full with the heavy rain uh, will drop by half mm-hmm. so one gigabit that's not bad for 37 kilometers uh, the, the last challenge that we had is to provide better services without replacing the customer CP. We choose to use the RF element horns, creating small sectors, micro sectors. I, I plan that kind of coverage four years ago. Mm-hmm. Four years ago, I plan to use 10 degree sectors. I see. What we can do in the future to bring more bandwidth to our customers? Micro sector, so 10 degree sectors where I can put inside 10, uh, no more 20 customers. Okay, micro sectors, so 36 sectors in a tower. Imagine that. That's th- this, this my plan in my mind. <laughs> yeah, and I plan to do that using panel antenna that use usually the 23 dB panel antenna have an aperture of 10 degrees. Mm-hmm. That was my plan. But you mean like directional one? Yeah. Not the sector, just yeah. the directional. Directional. The mm-hmm. panel antenna for the CPE, for example. Right. right. The standard uh, mm-hmm. square, 30 centimeters wide, usually have a gain of 20, 23 dB, and the aperture vertical and the horizontal is 10 degree. Was perfect for my idea, uh, but I never did because to mount the 36 panels is not easy, first. And second, because the DES antenna use a patch array system on the printed circuit board on the PCB, and the diagram, the polar diagram, is not uniform. Have a lot of micro sector together. And uh, then, uh, one year ago, I started to watch a new sector, asymmetrical one, the 2030 from RF elements, that if you mount in horizontal is uh, 20 at mm-hmm. minus 6 dB and is 15 at minus 3 dB. Let's say, okay, it's not 10 degree, but can be a starter before we are using the uh, ubiquity sector with uh, 330 degree on side. So we are working with 30 degree antennas, but they have uh, not so much insulation each other. There is a lot of cross. No much shielding, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know that, but they work for a while. Your horns is for us 15 15 degrees, have a good gain is 20.5, I remember. And a good elevation aperture is 22 degrees at the minus 3 dB, is the opposite. So I, will, I am able to cover more people than the standard uh, sector that have 8 degree or vertical aperture. And okay, the 15 degrees wide, 22 degree height is perfect to cover people under the tower and in front of the tower. Let's see. And the diagram, the diagram is just one main giant lobe. It's perfect. We design all the sectors. We load the antenna profile of the RF elements horse that we was able to download from the website. And uh, we was able to upload all our customer location mm-hmm. These are the customers that we had, we had attached to this tower before upgrading. That's the coverage. We discover, for example, this one will be difficult. No, this one is inside. So this is a different point. 
and almost of them, everybody is inside and with good signal. See the horn shape. Mm -hmm. Well, for you, this is invaluable, right? With the landscape here, it's just... of course, yeah. yeah. That's why we need to uh, point the the antennas uh, with accuracy. Why we need an instrument to properly align each mm -hmm. sector in the proper direction because I don't want holes between the sectors. I download all the horn models from your website. Right. Okay. They are in scale and here is the tower. So I rebuild the tower sides with the poles in the position and the length where they are and a big dish that it's by us mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And I was able to simulate completely, 100%, all the position and direction and uh, side of mount the bracket for each horns before going to the site. Right. And to plan to have free spaces to add more horns in the same direction, here and there. Right. These are the two backups. Right. They are in two directions, 90 degree. Right. So I'm saving a lot of space that way. Uh, we have 90 degree horns for backup. Oh, I see. In case one of failure, mm -hmm. we'll cover 90 degree, we we'll power on and we we'll mm -hmm. connect users. Meanwhile, our technician go to repair the cable, devices, whatever. Right. right. Yeah. I developed this system years ago because I was tired to run on Saturday or Sunday to do some repayment. I don't want to do anymore. It's my free day, I have to be free. I plan to be the first tower with uh, these horns. And we did it. And uh, it worked. And uh, by coincidence, uh, new tower, an old, old idea, and I have a product on the market that pro probably will be good for that. And he did. And we increase uh, people uh, from uh, 10 megabit probably because they have some signal problems or they are in uh, some side lob, you know, right? In the patch array antenna, you will never know what happens. From 10 to 60 megabits on 20 megahertz channel. And you can see we was able to increase the signals uh, between uh, only 6 dB, that a lot, 6 dB, is only for the, for the, I don't know, for the beginner, only 6 dB, it, it's a huge signal, up to 10, 12 dB, mm -hmm. that's a lot. And we will be able to switch to 40 megahertz channel now, because we have a good signal, we are, uh, we don't hear interferences between our horns and the competitors. And with 40 megahertz, we are able to bring up to 120 megabit to the customers using microtech devices. That you know, uh, on the market, there are better wireless products today with better technology, you know? So we will be able to bring this bandwidth without changing the customer's CPE. That's gold. Today, they are pointing uh, with the old method of uh, human eyes, right, you know? Uh, tomorrow, I will show you the prototype, okay. the working one oh, that I, nice. I originally designed, but is, you are not able to mount on the antenna. Right. It's just a piece of wood with components on top. Right, right, right. It has high precision. It's a zero, 01 degree. Uh, this is the first prototype of the GPS alignment system made by me. Okay. Work like uh, the product on the market. So using two GPS, one and two. This is quite long, is one meter long compared to the standard one on the market that are 30 or 50 centimeters. But I discovered that the more is the distance between the GPS antennas, the more accurate will be the reading of the heading of your antenna. 
So this is the maximum, I think, that you can use on a tower, but uh, the, the final product will be more compact and you, you should be able to adapt the length of uh, this uh, area case by case. This is the maximum for just for a, a prototype. Okay. So we have two high precision GPS receiver. And then we have a standard compass, is this one, magnetic one, is three axis magnetic compass and a three axis accelerometer and gyroscope to measure the, the tilt of your, your antenna. And a CPU that we made all the calculation and display the stuff on the display. The, all, the OLED display that we possible to read under the sun. Now let me power the device. The system acquire the reading from uh, three different uh, satellites like GPS, uh, GLONASS uh, and Beidou from China. Yeah, uh, how long did it take? With a few hours, I think about 200 hours of research and uh, develop in a free time, of course. Mm -hmm. So the program that's running it, did you did you take take some uh, code which was already done and modified it, or you no. did it from scratch? Built from scratch. From scratch. At Definitely. the beginning, I, I don't know if uh, I, I, I'm not sure right. that I was able to succeed. Right. Really. Right. right. I, okay, I will try in the weekend. Start uh, some weekends, Sunday, Saturday. The weekends became months. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Usually, in the, in the exhibitions, uh, people ask us the price of this cover. Oh, how it costs! The, that's a very good roof. And for joke, we are showing them the colors. Yeah, we have in green, in red, in blue. Which color do you like? <laughs> that's a joke. Quite a badass motorbike. Yes, there, is, sure. there is some. This is brand new. This is uh, this year from February but still have uh, some sign of uh, crash uh, during the races, you know. Oh, okay, okay. So it's not it's uncommon a... to crash, right? I mean... Oh, it's very common. Yeah. In, the, in the last, uh, last run, I crashed three, four times, I think. My name is Giacomo and uh, I'm a seller. I sell products with, which the company uh, deals with and uh, I uh, also do um, little uh, basic network uh, uh, architecture in, in order to sell them uh, to customers and always try to, uh, to propose the best solution to their needs. So the challenging part is uh, uh, understanding what the, are their needs, uh, which is something that they usually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> People uh, uh, used to, uh, used to uh, guess the medicine before knowing which is the problem. And so they want us and say, I, I need more, uh, more band bandwidth, and then the problem is the Wi-Fi coverage. Right. Sometimes I feel like a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> translate. Yes. Their so translate. Yeah, translate their needs. Translate their 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 right. feelings. Right. So I in um, usually uh, when when uh, there there is uh, some sometimes it happens then there is a first contact with the techni technical department, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then uh, to to solve. Yeah, their technical problems, uh, you need a, a commercial solution. And so my colleague passed the phone call to me and usually I, uh, I say, so which is the problem? Try to explain me, sit on the sofa like mm. a psychologist, <laughs> right. not to understand. The Lay down, relax. Yes, relax, relax, <laughs> don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll find a way to sort it out. <laughs> so, right, right. Allora, eh, lavoro qui da 18 anni, sono un tecnico sistemista, Mi occupo della manutenzione e dell'assistenza per quanto riguarda personal computer e server 
e faccio anche l'assistenza per quanto riguarda l'utente finale nella nostra rete Linkwave. Quindi mh, assistenza su problemi wireless, su mh, collegamenti verso i nostri impianti, tutto ciò che riguarda l'assistenza dei clienti sul, per quanto riguarda la, la parte sia wireless che sistemistica tradizionale dei PC o server. From your point of view, what would or what are the, the biggest challenges with your with your work? Eh, riuscire a trovare un, il giusto compromesso di pazienza e comunicazione con il cliente. Le macchine sono gestibili, i clienti un po' meno, quindi è necessario avere il tatto, l'intelligenza, la, la prontezza di riflessi per riuscire a poter comunicare con i clienti senza perdere la pazienza e allo stesso tempo aiutarli a risolvere i loro problemi che spesso ci pongono anche con una certa creatività, diciamo così. What do you, it's kind of a broad question, but what do you like and enjoy about being a WISP? Uh, in my case, uh, I like and enjoy the research. Research is uh, like this one. I, I found the problem and found the decision how to better solve it, to have a better result. Like the antenna aligner, like uh, micro sectors, uh, whatever. It's the building your towers. Yes, how to build the towers, where to build the towers, which services to have, uh, whatever. Right, so you're, is... you're there for the challenge. Basically. Yes, but and to make new things. Right. This is my real job. Uh, obviously, I have uh, also boring stuff to do every day. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Like every boss do, so. And on the contrary, what are the things you maybe don't like so much about, about running a business like this? Oh, too much paper. Right. The bureaucracies. Yeah, too much paper for everything, but only if you are a small company. That, that, that's, that is wrong. Did the pandemic influence your business at all? Yes, in positive. Okay. Because uh, with pandemic... Uh, Everybody need the internet uh, with uh, smart work, uh, smart school, uh, smart whatever, and they need internet more than before. So we increase by 50% our average internet consumption per day, 50% more. And uh, we was uh, maybe lucky, I don't know, because our network was ready for that. Uh -huh. So. We just see that the, the, the peak of traffic that increased and that's all. Right. Well, but increased traffic doesn't mean more traffic. revenue for you, right? Mm, Because no, the people right. would not pay for traffic mm -hmm. just for maximum of course. speed. Of so, course. Yeah. No. So, but did you see influx of new subscribers at all or like more than average? Let's just a little bit more, but there was not so much increase of customers. Okay, which probably means you already have yeah, yeah, mostly yeah. Just, just traffic. everyone. Right, they maybe here. they have to use more than before. Right. A lot of them upgrade the services from a low profile to a high profile mm -hmm. because they need more speed or more upload to host the Zoom presentation or whatever. Yeah. Right, right, right. So um, what about like your, let's say, long-term goals for the, for the company? Um, Do you want to keep, keep growing or do you want to keep it as is? We're working to keep the company grow in the years, to build more towers and to build more sectors, to provide more services to the rural people, because rural people will never receive fiber, I think. So we are the only one that we are able to bring them bandwidth and we should bring them more bandwidth as we can.